What's up guys, it's Prometheus Rex here, and today I want to give you 12 tips to help you win your fantasy football league this year. Now, let's get into it. So, the first tip I would definitely say is this is really important for your draft, is to make sure that you draft for fit, and don't just draft big names. Because ultimately, you want to make sure that you're not drafting you know, the Derrick Henry of when he was 22 years old, because he's not that anymore. He's 29. And you want to make sure that you draft players that their schedules don't conflict. So you got to make sure that you don't draft uh, just one type of position early in the early rounds. I've seen this a lot in the drafts that I've done is a lot of people just keep taking the same position for the first three or four rounds, which is not smart. If you're taking four wide receivers, your running back room is not going to be very good. And if you take four running backs, you're not going to have any top wide receiver. So you got to make sure you're, you're really smart with this. And also I want to say you got to make sure you draft for positional depth. Uh, you don't want to just have all wide receivers or all running backs. But you also got to make sure you have uh, at least two quarterbacks on your roster, depending on... Uh, because most leagues just have uh, one starting quarterback. Obviously, if you're in a league with where you're starting two, you got to make sure you have at least four on your roster. But I would definitely say you know you got to make sure that your roster makes sense. You don't want to have too much of one, and then you're scarce in all of the other positions. My next tip is you got to look at the strength of schedule before you draft. One thing that I've seen a lot is a lot of people have been drafting a lot of Patriots and Steelers players. The strength of schedule is pretty rough for the Steelers this year. So you want to make sure that I'm not saying don't draft like George Pickens and uh, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, that whole battle. If you want to get into that, go for it. But you want to make sure that you know what you're getting because there's some players, like Deontay Johnson, for instance, on the Carolina Panthers. He's got a better schedule this year for the Panthers than the Steelers have strength of schedule-wise. And obviously, you adjust each week, and you want to make sure that you're, you know, putting in a good matchup. But you also don't want to be like, oh, well, you know, he's a Steelers player. I gotta, I just got to put him in, you know. And there's definitely some teams like the Bengals and the Saints that have a lot easier schedule overall across the board, as well as the, the Falcons, too. Their schedules are so much easier, so I would target some of those players in the draft for sure. My next tip is do not draft too many players with the same buy. I know this might sound obvious. Some people might be like, okay, Jordan, but I want Jamar Chase, and I want... I want all of the, the players from this team. This is my team. I get to support them. I got get all the Cowboys players. No. You don't want too many players with the same buy or with the same team. Last year I was in a league. I had a friend that had pretty much every player had one of the same buy in the same week. And he had to drop half of his roster just to have somebody to play. This is not a situation you want to be in. you got to be really smart with this. Look at the buys before you draft. My next tip is make sure that you try to draft quarterbacks with healthy uh, history. Obviously, injuries happen, and I know that quarterbacks like Joe Burrow, they had been unlucky with their injuries. I'm actually higher on Joe Burrow this year. Uh, their offensive line looks a little better for the Bengals, and I think they will actually be able to protect him. Because also, this is the first uh, training camp that he's coming in, and he's healthy. So, you want to... He's an exception, but as far as players like Jared Goff, very healthy quarterback. He doesn't get hurt very often. Quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins, on the other hand, coming off a torn ACL, I'd be cautious. I would make sure that if I have Kirk Cousins on my roster... He's my backup. He's no longer a starter in fantasy this year. It's just not a safe pick. But there's plenty of uh, quarterbacks that have not been injured as much 
or in recent years, they tend to be, if they miss a game or two, yeah, things are going to happen. Injuries are going to happen. But healthy quarterbacks tend to stay healthier. They tend to not miss as many games as like a Lamar Jackson. He tends to get hurt in the middle of the season. And fantasy-wise, he's a little bit of a risk. So just be mindful of that. My next tip is use the waiver wire. Now, like we were talking about with injuries is you got to make sure that you fill in the gaps. If you lose your starting running back on one team that you have, and this is your guy, make sure you might want to have his backup on your roster on the bench. I know people do the benches differently, uh, depending on the person to person and league to league, but use the waiver wire week to week and just pick up if you're like, okay, I'm worried about Brees Hall getting hurt. Look and see who the Jets' backup is, or just look and see who a sleeper running back might be. If from another team a running back gets hurt, who's going to be their guy? My next tip is to make sure that you build a diverse bench. And what I mean by that is don't go all wide receivers, don't go all running backs. Have a balance. Maybe have a backup tight end if you're taking one that's, you know, might get hurt. You, some leagues are pretty deep with tight ends. So you might want to just have one on your roster just in case. Also, you got to make sure that you have a backup quarterback and at least two running backs on your bench because running backs tend to get hurt more. You want to be smart. You want to make sure, okay, this is, this is good. Like, I, I'm set. If anything happens, I have these two guys. They can step in right away. My next step is when injuries happen, don't panic. If you are prepared and you drafted enough running backs or wide receivers or quarterbacks, make sure that you adjust accordingly. You want to make sure, okay, I, I was expecting this. Obviously, if you're stuck, make a trade. I mean, some people are so scared to make trades sometimes. If you need like another starting wide receiver, and this guy has four just elite wide receivers, which has happened in the past leagues that I've been in, you make a trade, give up a good player, fill in a need, don't become too attached to who you have on your roster after you draft because things change, players go through ruts, and you're like, ah, okay. Also, make sure you don't drop players too quickly. You want to make sure that if there are players that are known for, you know, that maybe having like a slow first couple of games because a lot of teams don't play their starters in the first, uh, well, in the preseason in general. So you want to make sure that you're patient with it in the first couple of weeks, make adjustments, but don't drop someone that you're like, okay, this guy could potentially really pick it up. My next tip is start players with the best matchups each week, not just good players with bad matchups. And what I mean by that is there might be a guy like Deontay Johnson, who, yes, he's on a bad team, but say he's facing the weakest defense in the NFL. I would say go for it versus George Pickens facing the 49ers. Good defense. Again, you have to ultimately make the choice of who's good, who's, you know, you got to make the choice of who you want. But what I'm saying is if you have a good player with a really good matchup, go for it. Don't just be like, okay, George Pickens is my guy. You got to make sure you play him in every single week regardless of what happens don't fall in love with your players if they have a bad schedule just play it smart the next tip is take risks with players who have great matchups regardless of if they're big names or not this goes hand in hand with my previous tip but basically there's going to be some some rookies that are going to take off and you're like oh my gosh wow this rookie he's just he's killing it He's killing it. Or players like, like Drake London who have had you know horrible quarterbacks in the past couple of seasons and they take off and they're like, wow, I didn't know he was that good. But you got to make sure you take the risks on the players. So you're like, okay, Drake London, I think he's going to have a great season. He's got a better offensive coordinator. He's got a better quarterback and better backup quarterback if anything happens than he's had in his career so far. So... Take the risks. Be Obviously, do your research and be smart, but don't fall in love with big names. And the next tip I would say is 
don't overthink the projected points. I've seen this a lot, especially on the NFL fantasy app, where people are like, oh, I'm in big trouble. It says that this player is going to get, that this tight end is going to get 17 points this week. And then the next thing you know, he ends up with four because they just gave all the, they just gave the ball to the running back four times, and he ended up getting two touchdowns, and their wide receiver got two touchdowns. The projections are based off of the matchups; they're not based off of like set in stone thing. Anything can happen. So obviously, look at the matchups. Look at okay, who's who's their best corner that's going to be facing my wide receiver that I am going to going to potentially play is this a good matchup if it says oh you know Devonte adams is facing a good corner and he's only projected to score 12 fantasy points in a ppr anything could happen if you're like no i think he's gonna really go off he's ripe for a really big game it's a good matchup samir white's cooking potentially then you're good you're ready just go for it just be like all right i'm gonna start him and again, you got to make sure that when you draft players, that you're not just drafting, oh, well, you know, I'm drafting him because he was just based off of the ADP. He was just the next best. If you don't like the guy, don't draft him. I remember a few years back, I accidentally uh, auto drafted Joe Mixon because uh, I had a signal issue on my phone. And I was oh my gosh, I just cannot believe that I have Joe Mixon. And I ended up dropping him. And the next thing you know, he ended up getting hurt for four games. And I ended up signing uh, Puka Nakua. And I was like, wow, he just filled that, that void that I needed points-wise. And I ended up winning that league, which I think is it's great to, yes, don't fall in love with players, but also try to draft players. If you like them in each round, just draft them. If you're like, okay, CD Lamb, you know, you're picking third, you want CD Lamb, go for it. Or you're Jamar Chase, first round, I want him. Or even in the second and third rounds, if you're like, oh no, this running back, I don't want this guy to get it, because then he would have McCaffrey and he'd have Jameer Gibbs. You want to make sure that you you pick players that it fits and that you like. You also want to make sure that you adjust week to week. I would suggest that you check the stardom set that I am going to be posting uh, each week. And I would use them, you know, as a resource to help you if you're in a tough spot. And you're like, I don't know which guy to start. He's got a tough matchup, but he's good. If I say stardom, look into it and be like, oh, maybe. Maybe it's actually not as bad of a matchup than I expected. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and comment down below uh, what you think about these tips. And also, comment down below if you think that you're going to win your fantasy league this year. Uh, please let me know, and I hope you have a great day. Peace!